Now, before we can get into, you know, we want to get into like, how did this happen? Who could have possibly done it? But I think to really get a grasp of who these suspects are, we got to look at who Barry and Honey were. Absolutely. Who were they? Why do we yeah, care? Who, who why do we care that these people were double murdered? I mean, there's a lot of double murders all the time. No one cares about them. Why do we care about these people? All right, we're going to start with the history of Barry Sherman. He's from a Jewish family in Toronto, born in 42. His father died from a heart attack when he was only 10. So, I mean, he lost his father, father figure, so he's, he focused, focused on schooling, focused on getting real smart. Real like fucking, fucking smart. wicked smart. Like, like wicked, wicked smart. smart. Yeah. We, he, he, and in fact, he was wicked smart. <laughs> you know what? He was. He focused on math. He won national physics contests. Um, he, where he, he attended the Forest Hill Collegiate Institute, graduated with top marks in 58. He went to uh, University of Toronto, U of T. Uh, he graduated the en- engineering science program. He's pretty much going to be an astronaut at this point. Like he's taking astrophysics. He's, he's really. <laughs> He's at the top of the of the food chain as far as, far as academics. Uh, in summers, he worked for his uncle Louis Lloyd Winter at Empire Laboratories. At the time, it was Canada's largest wholly owned pharmaceutical company. Right. So early on, he got a taste of big yeah, pharma. Yeah, and, and basically, even, uh, well, actually, kind of little pharma. Not big little pharma. pharma. Little yeah. pharma. Because he, he got a taste of pharma. Empire Labs was basically, you know. This was the you know the proving grounds for Barry Sherman because he learned the ropes of generic drugs because that's what his uncle did at Empire Labs is he would you know he did on a small scale what Barry would eventually turn into his whole career. Yeah, and, and it's you know right? and it's cool too because it's kind of like a rags to riches story because he started at the bottom like his yeah. job was he basically his job at this test was basically delivering pregnancy tests. Right? Like, he wasn't even allowed in the lab at the beginning. He had to work his way up in this company as well. Well, he, yeah, his uncle made him earn the pedigree. So he ended up going to MIT, right, and graduated a PhD in astrophysics in 67. So he's legit going to be like an astronaut. He's an astrophysicist. He is a super smart guy. I mean, this is re- graduating at 67, you're right, the peak of the space race, too. Like, he could have easily went in to you know work on the space program of some in some fashion. Yeah, hundred percent. And you, you know, it's so now his uncle, you know, having his nephew Barry lost his, you know, lost his dad. He takes him under the wing, like he's showing him the ropes. He, he kind of like teaches him everything he knows about the business and how to run it until his untimely death in November nineteen sixty-five, at the age of forty-one. Young, at the age of 41, all right, this guy died of an aneurysm. And you and want to make things even a little bit more fucking weird? Well, yeah. his wife at the time of his death was actually terminally ill with leukemia and ended up dying 17 days later. So within the span so of, me, of 17 days, leaving, Empire Labs loses its, you know, basically... It's founder and then owner operator, owner operator. And then the, like the person who would inherit the company, uh, leaving the company in disarray. Yeah. Like it was left to the, to, I guess you would say the executor and, and, you know, make things even sadder. They left behind some orphans, four young kids, four young boys that were orphaned, lost their parents. Like your dad, could you imagine losing both your parents within the 17 day span? And like they, we're you talking kids yet. as young. I think the ages were like three, four, five, and seven. Like really young, young. yeah, young. like kids, An kids, absolute tragedy, children. But you know, through this tragedy, and not right away, mind you, but Barry, you know, used this to basically, it, and not right away. It took a while for the dust to settle yeah. on on all this stuff to you know all the legal framework of the both of them passing uh so quickly you know not having thing a succession plan uh set up or anything like that but Barry actually goes on to purchase Empire Labs 2 years later yeah after he got his PhD he came back saw that the company was kind of being ran in a fashion that his uncle probably wouldn't have approved you know things maybe have gone to disarray 
And he right away stepped in and be like, this isn't right. I can do this better. This is not what my uncle would have wanted. And he stepped in with a business partner that he met at uh, MIT, and they purchased Empire Labs. Empire Labs. And yeah, in his words, he pretty much said if he didn't purchase at that time, in his opinion, the company would have been worth nothing and it would have been dissolved and it would have been toast. It was being run to the ground in his opinion. So he's like, I got, I want, I want to buy it. I have, a, I have a partner. So he buys Empire, <laughs> Empire Labs. What a great name too, Empire Unreal Labs. Real name. So he runs Empire Labs for a bit. He ends up selling it, right? He does. Yeah. He sells it, and that, but he then with it, the money, he starts. He turns it into like a multi-million dollar company by the time he sells it, though. Yeah, like the profits. He turns it into a lean machine. He turns it around. Machine. Yeah, and then he gets offered $2 million for the company, which he does in turn take and sells. Yeah, for a small company, great deal. So he takes it, and in, the, in turn, he starts Apotex not long after. Right, yeah, and, now, and I mean, like... Go ahead, Brad. Well, and now, like, with... So basically, you know, when you look at this, like... Uh, he's 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 taken control of, of empire right he had a partner he had executives he had he, you know he had other people involved in this and by selling this company now he starts his own where it's now he is basically uh, he is the grand pumba right like he is in charge he controls every aspect of this company and this company grows to be canada's largest domestic pharmaceutical manufacturer they were the first they were the first company to secure the compuls- uh, compulsory rights to manufacture diazepam what is diazepam like, like again? valium also is, val- is valium valium is not an opioid though no, right no it's not it's a benzo it's, it's it like a, sleep, it's a benzo benzo yeah that, um and not only that like they got uh i Pretty sure he had exclusive rights like doxycycline as well, which is like a antibiotic that's massively prescribed and has been for like since having like that's that's fucking major boys like that's like that's partnering. I think doxycycline like he partnered with Pfizer. Yeah. Right. Right. So this guy as a it's not a is it private at this point? It's a small it's, it's a small a, company. It's it probably has company. some shareholders, but. It, so probably has some shareholders, but he owns he owns most of it, and he's comp- directly competing with big pharma. Big pharma is coming into Canada, setting up shop, and he goes to he he loves going to war oh, with these guys dude, pretty much. With through Apotex, like you watch some of the interviews with him, he's basically calling like these big pharma companies scum suckers coming in here, and, and like just absolute scum, flea ridden, you know, making ta- making profits off the back of sick people charging these patients exorbitant amount for name brand medication where and he, he's basically calling them crooks liars thieves you know scum of the earth so he and apotex are making generic brands you know for to for a fraction of the price for a fraction of the price so that you know he, he his big thing is like people shouldn't be impoverished impoverished uh you know to to treat their ailments yeah. right that's he basically what is about he's, He's basically self-proclaimed himself as the Robin Hood of uh, pharmaceuticals. Yeah, of big pharma. Yeah. Like that's he's, he's stealing. He's pretty much he's his in his mind. He's stealing from big pharma, like stealing the business and passing Robin the Hood. savings on to the Canadian population. Yeah. And like, and he's not scared because everybody that steps no. to him, he's he's tying them up in litigation and going to court and winning. He there at one point in time he loses, he, wins some, loses. Some. He was voted the yeah. most litigious man in Canada. Yeah, like he, right? like he thrived. He, he didn't give a fuck. He thrived on uh, going to war with Big Pharma. There's interviews with him. You can watch on uh, Fifth Estate and stuff where it's in his office. And his office, it looks like it's been ransacked, but that's how he was organized. And everywhere you look, there's stacks of paper. And he goes, each one of those is a different litigation. Legal binders in. everywhere. He goes, every single one of these is a current litigation that I'm. And he, it's not like he had lawyers, but he also went through all this shit himself. The guy was a workaholic. He never stopped. He people said he was awkward to talk to. He was hard to talk to because all he did was work. And you know, and he, he to be honest, you don't get you don't get to be the twelfth richest person in Canada if you're if you're you know not doing something like that. But he was also like you know a, a giver, right? Like he he helped out lots. He his charitable you know donations and stuff were. Crazy. 
they're of note and you don't have to look far to see like see what he gave back i mean he may, at this point he's taken the company he's you know from a couple million dollar company to 10 to 100 to 500 to a billion dollar multi-billion dollar company and he's giving back he's giving 500 million to the united jewish appeal he i think he got a minus gave zero funds off that. Or 50 million, sorry, yeah, you're right. 50 million to the United Jewish, Jewish Appeal. He provided funds to build a major addition the to the Bay Crest. That's just a conversion from Amer- a Canadian to American. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you're, if, you're, if you're wondering. Yeah. If you're wondering, it's not a big deal. It's a little bit of money, but not a lot. Uh, he, he gives funds to build a major addition to the Bay Crest Health Science Geriatric Center and to other community centers around the Toronto area. Uh, he's a major donor to the United Way. He starts the Apotex Foundation and donated another $50 million to medicines to like world disasters. Like literally every single time there was like a huge natural disaster, you know, anywhere in the world, Apotex would ship out millions of dollars worth of generic brand, no name brand, uh, prescription drugs to help right a- every single time without fault right yeah every yeah by like 2007 he has so much expendable income he doesn't mind in the public eye at least just shipping off millions and millions of dollars of drugs and helping people and it, but he doesn't even stop there like at this point he has there's thousands and thousands of employ- employees right and he hears of employees in financial struggle he has he doesn't even he helps them out he, if they have loans he bails them out there's multiple accounts of that he what does he do he supports like orphan cousins and well yeah his right family like we've with, about, with, with we've talked about the winter kids right they had the four orphan yep. winter kids yeah he he helps them out with financial endeavors and business he, he f- hey guys thanks for watching i know it's annoying to watch these in, broken up in 10 minute segments But here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks, guys. Enjoy the next video.